Welcome back to the newest edition of the Grand Valley State Sports Report on WGVU. I'm your host, Jake Levy. The Laker men's and women's basketball team traveled to the UP this weekend. Mike Williams and Rick Wesley stop in to talk about their teams and preview a crosstown battle with Davenport. The GVSU track and field team hosted the Mike Lintz Alumni Open over the weekend. Head coach Jerry Baltus takes us through the meet. GVSU swimming and diving dominated regional powerhouse U Indy as they came away with two huge wins this weekend. We'll recap the meet and let you know what's next for the team. Our feature this week highlights the changes in Laker lacrosse, including a change in head coach here at Grand Valley State. Lock it in, Laker Nation, as the Grand Valley State Sports Report starts right now. Traveling to the UP over the weekend, the GVSU women's basketball team beat Michigan Tech on Thursday, then fell to Northern Michigan on Saturday. Here to talk about his team is head coach Mike Williams. And coach, this is one of the longest trips of the year. How things go for you guys? You know, uh, Jake, it is. It's, it's, a, it's a trip that kind of tests your toughness. Um, you know, the travel, going up there. You know, the nice thing is we do it once or twice a year. They got to do it every other weekend. But, uh, you know, I thought for the most part it went well. We actually had some good weather. I texted one of the coaches up there and said, hey, thanks for the sunshine to uh, welcome us to the UP. This is the first in four years. So as we came across the bridge, the sun was out. Uh, it, it, it was a good trip. It was a good trip. You did it different than usual. For the most part, you guys have played Northern on the front end and Michigan Tech on the back end. This week it switched around. So you start with that Thursday game against Michigan Tech. Tell us about that game. Got off to a little bit of a slow start, but really picked things up down the stretch. You know, Tech came out uh, and give our uh, players some credit. They kind of hung to the game plan, and we said these are the shooters and these are the non-shooters. And two kind of their non-shooters made threes, and they had a nice pull up in our face, went under a ball screen, hit a three. So, um, you know, Tech went out to got out to a nice start, and our players kind of hung in there, kind of weathered that storm, um, and then I thought, you know, hung to the game plan and did a nice job after that. Three of your players score in double figures. It starts an 11 to 4 deficit midway through that first quarter. Then from the five minute mark of the first to the second minute or the four minute mark of the second, Michigan Tech doesn't score a single point. What was the key defensively to that? You know, I thought our kids were really active. I thought their hands were active. You know, again, I thought they locked into what we told them to do, um, you know, and kind of hung to it even after that start. And, um, you know, they just they played hard. I thought they did a good job covering up for one another. You know, Tech got a kick out a couple times. We flew at a shooter. They penetrated. Someone was there. Second kick, we were there. Uh, and we did a good job of keeping the ball off of the block. Jen DeBoer, who had maybe some struggles scoring the ball last week at home, comes out in this game where really nobody was providing too much offense. She plays all 40 minutes, scores 27 points, also pulls in six rebounds. What was the key for the difference for Jen DeBoer on Thursday? You know, I, I thought she was aggressive and assertive offensively, whether it was attacking the rim uh, with some pull-up jumpers or finishing or trying to take some threes, you know, pull up with some threes. I thought they did a good job of trying to surround Cassidy, uh, run some players at her when she did touch the ball, and that obviously freed up some outside looks, uh, and it was for Jen, and, and she took advantage of it. But I thought she played with, it, with a little pop in her step, uh, and she made some tough shots. And sometimes, you know, score 27, 28 points up at Tech, you got to make a couple tough shots. Speaking of in the 20s, how about Cassidy Bench, the fourth Laker ever, plus 20 rebounds in a game, 21 on the boards on Thursday, Coach. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> again, it's, I feel bad for Cassidy because her expectations are so high. But you get done, you're looking at, wow, she only had 15 points. And then you're looking at 21 rebounds. And, you know, it's a stat that, um, you know, it keeps teams from getting offensive boards and second chance opportunities. Uh, and she also gets uh, some easy ones on the offensive glass. But, you know, she's, she's playing a lot of minutes. And, and for a post player, for a 6'4 post player to play that many minutes, and, and expect that much out of her. She, she's doing a really good job. Yeah, Jen DeBoer has 27. Cass has another double-double. The Lakers beat the Huskies on the road 53-35. to Two days later, face another really tough team in Northern Michigan. Coach, tell us a little bit about that game off the top. You know, it's been a battle. 
uh, for the last three years. We've played them, I think, uh, eight times, and I think that they've all kind of, I think it was two, a double overtime and overtime and one up at their place that a miracle one where, where Piper Tucker stole the ball, went in, got intentional foul, but, um, you know, it just that's the kind of games it is when Grand Valley and Northern play, and they're a big team, they're a physical team. Um, you know, it makes it tough for us, but, you know, we, we, we get a chance to play them again, and we're going to have to make some adjustments, and I think our players will make some adjustments, and, um, you know, you've you got to embrace those games because I think they do make you better, um, and, and, they're, and they're fun to play. Is it fair to say that maybe the Northern game is one of the first times this year you guys have been on the wrong side of the size mismatch? Uh, yeah, I would think so. Yeah, Lewis was really good, and obviously that's the two teams we lost to. So, um, you know, yeah, you know, size is a, is a big deal. It really is. And, uh, you know, we, we just got to gotta figure out some other things to do to negate their size. And, and, and we'll have that opportunity when they come to our place, so that's, that's kind of exciting. Ended the first half in that game against Northern on a 5-0 run. Then you come out in the second half, get off to a great start, got back within five minutes or five points with seven minutes to play in that quarter, led to a timeout by Northern Michigan. What was the change there after that timeout that let them regain some momentum? You know, I think he just, I think he just settled his troops a little bit and just get, you know, kind of took the air out of our sails. I think it was a great timeout. Um, I usually don't call him that quick, but he did, and I, I thought it was a really good timeout. Uh, you know, and it kind of, I think it just, it, it, Settle us down a little bit, and uh, you know, and, and again, they came out and, and they made a couple tough shots. We missed a couple looks, turned one over, you know, it kind of it kind of snowballed on us. But um, you know, I don't think they did anything different. I thought he did a, a better job of going onto the block after that timeout, um, and we didn't cover it up real well. And um, you know, and, and they went on a run. 14 game winning streak snap, but still an incredible run, fourth longest streak in program history. Now, coach, you get the midweek off before you face Davenport, your old team, next Saturday. What do you do to take advantage of some off days here this week and get ready to get right back on the horse, as you say? Well, we got two days of rest, and we took Sunday off, and then those players that were playing those, you know, 30 plus and 40 minutes a game, uh, we're going to take today off. Um, and we're going to kind of walk and not celebrate, but kind of get involved in the Martin Luther King activities on campus, you know, a great. A great day, um, and so that'll be cool, and it'll just be something where we won't wear their bodies, you know. And then, obviously, we prep again. It will take a couple of days to prep for, uh, take care of us, you know, work on some things that we need to work on, and then again, we get a chance to to prep for Davenport. And every, you know, you get in this conference, you kind of look at it, say, well, in the non-conference, this team finished here, this team finished here. Uh, but when you get in the conference, everybody's preparing for everybody, everybody's playing everybody twice, and so it just it gets a little tougher, and so we've got we've got ten games left and a, a tough stretch, and we need to finish strong. Lakers travel across town to face Davenport on Saturday. Good luck, Coach. Thanks for your time. All right, Jake. Thank you. When we come back, we'll catch up with men's head basketball coach Rick Wesley on the Grand Valley State Sports Report. The GVSU men's basketball team fell in overtime to Michigan Tech on Thursday, then took a loss to Northern Michigan on Saturday. Here to talk about the games is head coach Rick Wesley and coach this trip up to the Upper Peninsula, always one of the toughest of the year. Uh, no question, uh, primarily because they're good teams, and this year was uh, no, no exception. Uh, both teams very physical, well coached. Uh, both teams competed very hard. Uh, we had a chance in both games, but unfortunately weren't quite able to get it done. Got off to a great start in the game against Michigan Tech on Thursday night. Really no hangover from that long trip on Wednesday. Tell us about that game a little bit. Well, you know, you're right. We, we played pretty well early. I thought we got off to a you know, good start. We were taking it at them, uh, making some shots, kind of had them on the ropes a little bit. Um, but as always the case there, you know, they're not going away. They, they came back strong in the second half. Um, uh, Bilski Heath really made some great three-point shots. We had a couple calls not go our way. We had a couple uh, poor possessions. The next thing you know, it's just a, a nail biter. And so it kind of came down to one or two plays, a couple long rebounds that um, you know we had our hands on, but we weren't able to secure. And had we been able to get them, you know, this might very well have uh, turned out differently. But uh, a lot of credit to them. Um, you know, they're a tough, hard-nosed team. 
You guys really played well again down the stretch, though, bouncing back. Jake Van Tubergen, 10 for 10 from the free throw line, including those two that tied it up late in that second half. For Jake to have that kind of performance, 19 points, six rebounds, it seems like something you need out of your sophomore. Well, no question. I keep telling him, you know, he's got to step it up. I mean, he's a, certainly an outstanding player. We need him at times to be great. Uh, you know, there's good play there by Shake MacArthur. Um, you know, when you, these teams also, they have good players. We have some good players. A lot of times it comes down to, you know, who has the very best player. And in a given game, I always think Jake has a chance to be that very best player in every single game. And just a sophomore, we're asking a lot out of him. Um, but he's got the talent to deliver. Hunter Hale hit four threes in that game as well. His three-point shooting has really come on strong as of late, Coach. What's been the key to Hunter catching fire? Well, Hunter's an outstanding shooter, you know, and he's had a good year. Sometimes uh, he gets in trouble where he tries to do a little bit too much. That's, you love it when he takes it to the basket, kind of keeps them on their heels. Uh, he made several good plays. And the tough thing about this game was it, it wasn't without a lot of outstanding play on our part. We made, like you said, some key free throws, some big shots at big times. Um, but, you know, a play here or there, and it's an overtime loss. So it's not, it's not as if we're a long ways from uh, being where we want to, but uh, it's just one or two plays here and there. Definitely a tough loss, 91 to 87, first overtime game of the year for the Lakers. And then two days later, got to turn around and go to another tough environment in Northern Michigan. Yeah, Northern Michigan was a team that a lot of people thought was the team to beat in our conference. They've had some ups and downs, but uh, they seem to have found their way this past week. They had a great win on Thursday over Davenport. And, um, and it felt like they kind of rode that momentum into this game. They kind of went with their bigger lineup. Um, their defense was really good. And their two outstanding players, Nava Eccles and Isaiah Johnson, uh, were as good as advertised. So um, made a great gallant comeback in the second half. Got right there. But, uh, again, I guess it feels like uh, uh, it's a record over and over. But, it, you know, it's just a couple key plays here and there. And, uh, Unfortunately, we weren't able to get them done. Yeah, Jake Van Tubergen had seven points midway through the first half, but then didn't have any the rest of that period. What did they do to kind of adjust and take away Jake down the stretch of that first half? Well, I thought he got tired. Uh, I just thought he got tired. And, um, you know, how he prepares, how he fuels up, you know, all those things are important not only for Jake, but for all of our team. And coming off that overtime loss on Thursday, one day to recover, uh, afternoon game on Saturday, you know, you're – your physical well-being has a lot to do, uh, again, not just Jake, but I think our entire team. We're not a big, bulky, burly team, and uh, we try to do all we can, um, you know, in terms of uh, food and rest and so on and so forth, but sometimes it comes down to just that uh, physical well-being. Yeah, one of the keys seemed to me early on, about three minutes in, Coach, Isaiah Brock picks up his second foul, and a team like Northern Michigan that's so guard-heavy, to have Isaiah in there to anchor the defense seemed like it would have been a big thing. Was the foul trouble for him big for you guys? Well, uh, you know, I, I thought J.G. had some good minutes as well. Isaiah's probably a little bit better defender, so certainly his ability to be in there and protect the basket is always a, a, a variable for us. Uh, I, I just thought we just didn't have that you know, third and fourth guy really step up and play well. We, we've got to get better play out of our, our small forward spot. Uh, uh, we, we've tried any number of guys, but we, it seems like we're really inconsistent there. Um, so, again, it just, it's just a matter of more guys having positive impact on the game. Uh, uh, Hunter's been pretty consistent. Jake's, you know, been pretty consistent. Um, our point guard spot, Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah Ferguson, has played better as, as of late here. But we've got to get somebody else uh, in that mix that we can count on each and every night. You got that midweek game off this week, Coach. A little extra rest for some of you guys as you go into this big game against Davenport, Crosstown Foe. They're also off to a great start this year. What's the key against the Panthers this week? Well, I think getting healthy is a good thing. Having that extra day, I'm really looking forward to it this week. Got a couple guys with a little nagging injury, so uh, hopefully that, that will help. Uh, Davenport's got a very good team. Um, their guard play, they've got really almost like three point guards out there, so their ability to pass and handle the ball uh, is really outstanding. Uh, their defense has been strong all year. They're difficult to match up with. Uh, they can hit you from a lot of different angles. They really play well together. Coach Paddock does an outstanding job over there. So last year we went over there and it was uh, like walking into a, a bee's nest. And uh, I would imagine it's going to be the same thing. Hopefully having the extra time this week will uh, allow us to prepare a little better. Well, the good news is in the GLIAC 5-5, five and five, you're right in the thick of things. It's so congested. Coach, thanks for your time. Good luck on Saturday. All right, thank you. When we come back, we'll dive into a recap of the swimming and diving team defeating UND in Davenport as the Grand Valley State Sports Report continues on WGVU.
Competing in the final dual meet of the season before the GLIAC Championships, the GBSU men's and women's swimming and diving teams dominated regional powerhouse UND and crosstown rival Davenport en route to two huge wins this weekend. On the women's side, GBSU defeated number four Indianapolis 200 to 105 and Davenport 237 to 60. The Lakers won 11 events, including three from Melina Goebel and two from Hannah Richard and Michaela Karasek. Cecilia Hogue led a 1-2 finish in the 100 breast while Samantha Large was second. Goebel picked up her second win when she touched the wall first in the 200 fly. Richard won the 50 free and Diebel picked up a win in the 100 free. Sydney Weaver finished third in the 100 free. Brereton touched first in the 200 back while Decourt finished third. Large hit the wall first in the 200 breast while Hogue was third. Goebel notched her third win when she touched first in the 500 free while Megan Shaughnessy finished third in the race. Richard led a 1-2 finish in the 100 fly where Martinez finished second. The Lakers relay team would go on to win the 200 free relay. On the diving side, Michaela Karasek picked up wins on both the 1-meter and 3-meter boards. Nicole Carlson was third on the 1-meter board. Also competing in the pool, the third-ranked Grand Valley State men's swimming and diving team defeated number one-ranked Indianapolis Saturday afternoon on the final event of the day. Freshman Keegan Hawkins won three individual events and GVSU won the 200 free relay to secure the win. Grand Valley State won eight events and used depth to defeat the top-ranked Greyhounds. Hawkins added a win in the 100 breast while Michalaukas touched third. Sarah Armengold touched second in the 200 fly while Goodyear finished fourth. On the diving side, Chris Kelly finished third on the three-meter board and fourth on the one-meter board. A major turning point came in the 50 free where the Lakers went 1-2-3. Walling touched first followed by Ham in second and Bruce in third. GVSU added a 2-3-4 finish in the 100 free as Walling touched second, Ham third, and Eric Klein in fourth. Shalaman added a second win when he touched first in the 200 back, followed by Tabor Smith in second. Grand Valley State closed out the dual win when Walling, Armengel, Bruce, and Ham dominated the 200 free, three seconds ahead of Indianapolis. GVSU will host the Diving Invitational this Friday, then prepare for the GLIAC Championships in late February. The GVSU track and field team hosted the Mike Lintz Alumni Open this weekend at the Kelly Family Sports Center. We caught up with head coach Jerry Baltus after the meet. Take a listen. 2019 Mike Lintz Alumni Open uh, here at Green Valley. Uh, uh, had a great day today, brought, brought our alums back. He had about 75 alums back in the building, a lot of them with little kids running around. Uh, always a great day for us to, to do the alumni relay in the middle of the meet and then the Little Lakers, uh, future Lakers uh, race, uh, one lap race. So it was great to have uh, Our, our old timers back and then uh, hopefully some future Lakers back. So a great way to uh, bridge the gap between our current team and the past. Uh, we had a great day. Uh, ladies uh, had some uh, great performances. We rested some of our sprinters. We opened up our pole vaulters. Uh, we opened up our mid distance and some of our distance kids uh, coming off the cross country season, got them back in the swing of things. So on the ladies side, I'd say the highlight was probably a couple of our pole vaulters. Uh, Ellie Kimes uh, had a great uh, meet. Um, Stemple had a, had a great uh, meet as a freshman of ours, so those two ladies uh, did a really nice job. Our throwers continue to be consistent. Erica Lechner had a very nice uh, step forward in the shot put. Uh, Bobby uh, Goodwin in the weight led us again, so those were positives. On the, on the track side of things, uh, Bailey McGill uh, had a great meet last week. I thought she came back did another nice job today in the sprints. Uh, Benson did as well. Kimbrough was solid. Um, And then uh, distance-wise, uh, some of the, the positives, uh, Rachel Walters uh, looked uh, solid in the mile, but uh, I thought Abby Crouch ran a really, really strong mile. Uh, Malia Tierman looked good in the 3K. Uh, and then we had some good things. Uh, we did some workout stuff in there, uh, bouncing back in the quarter, so some of our middle distance uh, ladies uh, put some good workouts together in that sense. Yeah, it was a little bit of like a rust buster since I haven't raced since December. Um, did an up event before going back to the 800. Um, kind of treated it today a little bit, I guess, like a workout because I came back in the 400 later. The goal was to try and get a PR under 450. Uh, fell a little bit short, but, you know, I still felt good out there, so. On the men's side, our vaulters got going and Jacob Batani led us there. Uh, he's been a little banged up the, the last few weeks uh, and got back in the swing of things about a week ago. So, you know, he was on a short approach, short pull, and still had a, a positive performance uh, winning the event there. 
Uh, our throwers are solid. Uh, I think we'll see some big uh, big throws out of them in the, the coming weeks. Um, also, uh, you know, our sprint side, um, Tyler Mansfield, freshman of ours, uh, had a solid hurdle race, so I thought that was a positive on the day. Uh, in the middle distance races, um, uh, Dennis Buta looked great for 1,200 meters. He's been a little dinged up the uh, last couple of weeks, uh, but still uh, put a solid mile out there. Nick Solomon looked good in the 800. Uh, Jacob Dom Domogowski was strong in the 800. Um, so some positive things to work with. I think uh, we've got a great upside across the board. Uh, we just need to keep making uh, progress, and, and we'll be in a good spot uh, as we move forward. Another highlight on the men's side, Ryan Mountain, a high jump, uh, had a nice performance, two meters. Uh, so a good step forward, and uh, hopefully, you know, in the next couple of weeks, we see him in the 204, 205 range. GBSU women's lacrosse has seen a dozen players and their head coach exit the program over the last year. Looking to bring her own ideas into GVSU, new head coach Mackenzie Lawler looks to make each player on her team rise to their potential. Tom Cleary has the story. It's tied. There's two minutes left. We need to go get the ball back so we can score. Then we're going to be like St. Smoke to go out and pressure to take the adjacents, and then we would chase them further out. Last year's lacrosse season ended in a home defeat in the GLIAC tournament and was followed by the resignation of the program's only head coach, Alicia Groveston, and the loss of a dozen players through graduation. But with the start of the 2019 season now rapidly approaching, spirits are high as Mackenzie Lawler gets set to field a retooled squad that's quickly adapted to its new coach. You know, having a couple of those upsets the last couple of years in the GLIAC tournament really gives them a lot of motivation to use this as a new clean slate, you know, use it as an opportunity to kind of get back to where we were a couple of years ago. Um, and I think it's lit a little fire um, under them to really come out hard from day one and, and keep working because they know, you know, you have to work that full year in order to be successful in May. Lawler is a former Michigan prep star from Okemos who played Division I lacrosse at Robert Morris University in Pittsburgh before starting her coaching career. She was an assistant at Central Michigan when she was hired by Kerry Becker to take over in Allendale, and her first task was to personally contact each of her players to assure them of their worth and place in her program. She's made it very clear to us that it is important to her that whatever our role is, whether that be um, major in practice or in games, um, that we have a place on the team and that it is important to her. Um, I know we are all a little bit nervous, getting new head coach is kind of scary, but we've had our assistant coach Rachel who was there with us the whole time to help us with the transition, so it's definitely been hard, but also for, I think, the better. <laughs> In addition to being the coach at Grand Valley, Mackenzie Lawler has been active for years as the founder and coach of two West Michigan club lacrosse teams for younger players. As a result, she's well known throughout this area and the rest of the state as a tireless lacrosse advocate who depends on drive and organizational skills to make all her teams successful. Right, it's really nice. She'll give us a full laid out practice plan each week, what we're going to do each drill. She'll, during the drill, she'll be like, okay, we have one minute, then a one minute water break, and then we're right into the next thing. So it's very efficient and has really helped us throughout the season, I think, to, you know, get things done the way they need to be done. As for this year's team, Lawler is hoping veteran players like Stagard and senior Kelly Fitzgerald can stabilize a young team that worked hard through fall practice to establish a new identity and make the most of its opportunities. Lawler has a degree in mathematics and after sifting through last year's stats, believes Grand Valley needs to get more out of the shots it will get this year. I think so. You know, my background actually was in uh, mathematics. That's what I majored in undergrad. So I'm all about efficiency and kind of getting the most, um, you know, every possession down the field. And I also think we're really trying to bring a little bit more of a balanced attack than maybe um, what we've seen in the past. You know, there were so many great players last year that graduated with Megan Datema and Erica Newman. And, you know, they are, are so historical in Grand Valley women's lacrosse. Um, you know, we're excited about having, you know, an attack that no matter which seven are out there, all seven are, are great uh, threats, whether it's with the ball as a feeder or driving. And I think that will be really tough for opponents to stop, you know, as opposed to just scouting one or two players. Already Mackenzie Lawler has announced the signing of eight recruits for the 2020 season at Grand Valley. 
As for now, she and her current players seem convinced the fresh start they're all getting in 2019 will result in a team that's focused and ready to go when they open the season late next month at Lake Erie in Ohio. After that, it's on to Colorado for three more games before the home debut March 29th against McKendree, the team that ended the Lakers season in 2018. For the Grand Valley State Sports Report, I'm Tom Cleary. That's all the time we have this week on the Grand Valley State Sports Report. The GVSU men's and women's basketball teams only have one game this week as they'll play at Davenport this Saturday. The GVSU track and field team will host the GVSU Open on Friday at the Kelly Family Sports Center. GVSU Swimming and Diving will host the GVSU Diving Invitational this Friday, then prepare for the GLIAC Championships in late February. For a complete schedule of all Laker games, as well as stories across the entire athletic program, visit GVSULakers.com. To see more of this show, head to our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash WGVU35. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get updated video and highlights all year long. For the entire crew here at WGVU, I'm Jake Levy. Have a great week, Laker Nation, and anchor up.